What's going on everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the channel and today we are here for our first post free agency NFL mock draft. It's going to be a two round mock draft with some trades sprinkled in. I'll tell you right now not a lot of trades in the second round just because that's a little hard to predict but I do think there's going to be definitely some big time movers in the first round as it relates to the quarterback position. I also have a trade for an edge rusher so let's yay. Throw a prediction. What's team outside of, I mean, I guess Minnesota right now. It seems pretty obvious that they're going to try to trade up. But what team's going to trade back with the Minnesota Vikings? Well, let's find out. Two rounds, starting with, it's Caleb Williams to Chicago Bears. That is pretty much a foregone conclusion. The draft really does start at pick two. Even though, in reality, I think it starts at pick three. Now, at pick two, the Washington Commanders, they have a decision to make. It's going to come down to Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Which one they prefer I have this weird feeling that if I was trying to pick what I think they would do, I feel like they're going to go Jaden Daniels. I don't know why, but this mock draft is what I would do if I was controlling all these teams. And if that is the case, Drake May for me is firmly and has been throughout this whole draft process quarterback too. And I think if the commanders want to find their best shot at a franchise quarterback, they're going to take another swing at a North Carolina quarterback. And this one is pretty deep. I, I, I still don't know. Like, you literally, you'll bring up a scouting report, Drake May show all his negatives. I still don't see most of the negatives that a lot of people are bringing up with him. I think he's an outstanding quarterback prospect, and I think he should go pick two. We got our first trade. I think the Patriots, this is kind of a set, man. You, have, you know, obviously teams have the New England Patriots drafting a quarterback. I don't think they're remotely close to being a quarterback away. So I think if you're in a spot where you can get pick 11, pick 23, and I'm going to say in this argument, if I'm trading out of this, I'd be looking. I, I don't know if you can get that third first round pick. I don't think Jaden Daniels is worth three first round picks, but I'm going to assume like you can get, you know, two first this year, a second and something else, like a second and a fourth, a second and a third, something like that. You can get a good ransom. And I think it's a, uh, for how much of a rebuild the Patriots need. Like they're not, it's just, you're going to throw what Jaden Daniels to the Wolves. They got no wide receivers or offensive lines incomplete. Get more talent. Let Mayo get a complete rebuild. The Vikings, however, need to be very aggressive. You need to find a way to make Justin Jefferson happy. Because he need a contract. I would I found him, I would decide until I see what the hell you got a quarterback. You know, I got Sam Darnold out of free agency. The Vikings are trading up to three. And I still feel like that same thing is like if they get JJ McCarthy, that's still kind of like a is that gonna is that gonna make Justin Jefferson happy? But I think trading up and getting a Jaden Daniels, the quarterback out of LSU would make Justin Jefferson and those guys happy. And I think Jaden Daniels, for as much as I don't think he's better than Drake May, he still is after what I saw last year at LSU, what I saw before he was at LSU at Arizona State where he showed some flashes. Like, there is absolutely a franchise quarterback potential there. And you go somewhere like Minnesota that already has weapons in place. Hawkinson, Addison, Jefferson. You know, pretty similar to the weapons that he had at LSU. Arizona, pick number four. We're going to have them go Marvin Harrison Jr., I, you know, maybe there's a slight chance he falls because he's just not testing at all, but I, he's the best. He's still the best. I am not taking anybody over Marvin Harrison Jr., even though the wide receivers in this year's draft class are ridiculous. I don't know how many I have going in these first two-round mock draft, but it is probably more than any other year I can remember in recent memory. Because staying on the wide receiver train, Marvin Harrison Jr., height, weight, speed, ticks off all the boxes, franchise, wide receiver one, something Arizona hasn't had since Larry Fitzgerald. At pick five, it's a new era in L.A. after moving on from Keenan Allen. And they're going to go out and get a shiny new weapon for Justin Herbert in Malik Neighbors. Arguably the best deep threat, proven deep threat wide receiver in this draft class. Absolute game changer. Definitely a guy that went on target a lot in fantasy football. Pick six, the wide receivers continue. It seems like Daniel Jones is the guy. If you're trusting the word out of the Giants camp. So if that is the case... Get in more weapons. They go and get Rome Odunze, wide receiver from Washington. Uh, height, weight, speed, jump ball type playmaker. And it, usually you get the guys that get, you know, that are the jump ball as good as Odunze is. They usually don't have the speed and athleticism to kind of match up. But he posted big time Raz numbers, tested above, and maybe even met certain high expectations that you're supposed to have uh, at the combine. Absolute dog. And I guess, you know, maybe, maybe you put a super team, the Avengers, around. Even though that's going to be tough to do because a lot of Saquon Barkley need more than just a Dunze. But you, you, you put a lot more investment still in the offensive line and, and try again with Daniel Jones, I guess, if you're the Giants in this spot. 
unless I actually would like to see the Giants somehow, some way, be aggressive and just maybe trade up to get one of the big three quarterbacks. But I do think Daniel Jones' contract makes some of that difficult from the standpoint of what you would have to, tr you know, give up to trade with the lack of salary cap you have to build the rest of the roster. Tennessee at pick number seven. This seems like an easy selection as well. They're going to get Joe Alt at offensive tackle after moving on from Andre Dillard. That was bad. Sorry. Don't hold us Eagle fans accountable. I hated that pick. We made Andrew, Andre Dillon the first one. was one of my more popular draft reactions. I, well, that's what I said. Outside of, obviously, Jalen Hurts, I've had some pretty good on the point shitting on draft picks. Nelson Aguilar video, shit on that pick. Did well. Obviously, they did well in terms of I looked all right. Even though Aguilar kind of redeemed himself during the Super Bowl run. Um, Andre Dillard, shit on that pick. Sorry, Titan fans. He sucks. Uh, Derek Barnett was another one. Shit all over that pick. He wasn't, you know, obviously we all know Derek Barnett. One big play other than that was dog shit. Either way, so are you about Andre Dillard. Joe Alt, franchise tackle, best tackle in this year's draft class. Pick eight, we have the Atlanta Falcons, and I'm going to have them go get to Dallas Turner, the edge rusher from Alabama. It's about time Atlanta starts trying to prioritize this pass rush. I think you still hope that Arnold Ebiketti can develop. You put him on the other side of Ebiketti, have him and Lorenzo Carter kind of rotate there. And get a nice pass rush as you think the offense is gonna, you know, they've they've invested at wide receiver, made the trade too for Rondale Moore. They got Darnell Mooney, Kirk Cousins. So you figure like the offense is looking pretty decent. You have Bijan year two. I think this pick eight, they stay here, don't they? They could be a team. Wants to trade back a little bit, but I think if you stay here, you go get the best pass rusher in this year's draft class. Pick nine. We're going to have another trade. And we have the Chicago Bears. This is because the Bears got two first round picks. I feel like they're gonna be like, all right, we can be a little loose here. I think you're going to have the Denver Broncos trade up from pick 12. We're going to throw in 12. We're going to throw in a third round pick. Might be able to get a conditional pick on top of that. But I think for the Chicago Bears sitting there acquiring more picks at that spot is going to help them with their rebuild and building around Caleb Blaine's a little bit more. And the Denver Broncos are trading up because they're going to go get J.J. McCarthy. And I've said this time and time again, I think McCarthy has the potential to be something good. Has the potential to justify top 10 selection. You just need a quarterback guru. And I think not only do you think you have that in Denver with Sean Payton. John, you know, Sean Payton is like the kind of guy that's arrogant enough to be like, give me that guy. I'm going to make him something special. Want to take on that project of J.J. McCarthy. So that is what Denver goes ahead and does here. Because there's just no way they go with Jared Stidham as quarterback one. Jets at pick 10. I'm going to go get Brock Bowers. I mean, we're not really falling off too much here of the big board. Kind of going in line. I thought all along the Jets would go tackle. They seem to invest that in free agency. Ryan Towers put that whole O-line and offense in bubble wrap. They're going to be pretty damn good. But I look at like what could take this team over the top. Someone like Brock Bowers, who I think could fall. Most mock drafts, I've not. This is probably the highest I've had him going into my mock drafts. He's not testing at all. He's not like Kyle Pitts where he had like, measure, like undeniable measurables. You're kind of just looking at outstanding tape at Georgia. He's going to be good. But the fact that he's not testing at all, is it is a question mark. It, it's it's maybe not that big of a question mark because it's pretty obvious that he is a very good football player. But maybe, maybe he could fall a little bit. But I think Jets would be a very fun landing spot for him going on that offense. And if they can stay healthy, they're going to be pretty dangerous. So the Patriots get their first pick from trading back. And they're going to go get Fashanu, the offensive tackle from Penn State. Starting to retool that offensive line. Things a plug and play left tackle for them sooner than later. Chicago Bears at pick 12. We're going to go with a popular pick. I've had the Bears make it. They stayed there at nine. So they're able to get the same kind of player and get more picks. And they're going to get Jared Verse, the pass rusher, out of Florida State. Uh, kind of looking at Chicago here again. Just find this one. Just get another guy that can make plays on the other side of Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat, the gamble to go get him, paid immediate dividends. He was outstanding after he made the, what was that, like midseason trade deadline. Get someone else so that he's not getting double teamed all season long. Kind of get a little more single teams, and I think that's what you get with Jared Verse. The Vegas Raiders at pick 13. This is slightly hot, but I, I looked at their team. The biggest need for me is clearly on the offensive line. And I think Troy Fatano is a dog. I think he's a big-time riser. I think he's getting disrespected in these rankings. I think when you look at Vegas, they need either a right tackle or a right guard. And I think Fatano, you play him at right tackle. Ideally, he is your franchise right tackle to play on the other side of Colton Miller. If not, guard. He's going to be a very high-level guard. I think you get two swings at a very good player. I'm just, and I, I mean, I don't know. I feel like every pick I've had for Vegas, I'm almost picking, like the Vegas Raiders and my Philadelphia Eagles have needs. So I almost like use pick 13. It's like if Philly was at pick 13, where would I go? And it would either be going best lineman available or best corner available. 
and I think Vegas might value the tackles a little bit more at pick 13, just because there's more versatility. It's not like, you know, I mean, I guess technically with someone like Terry and Arnold, because he was a safety recruit, it's like if he doesn't work out a corner, he can move him to safety. So you do get that a little bit. But I think prioritizing the offensive line there for Vegas is going to be important. And don't worry. Wait till the second round. We're going to help you out a little bit on the offensive side of the ball again. Pick 14, we have the New Orleans Saints. This was a tough pick for me. Originally, I've been going tackle with Ryan Ramchick. I thought he was going to retire. I guess that's not for sure right now. It looks like maybe he's trending. The last thing I saw in an article, I just Googled it, was they're optimistic. They got good news. So if that's the case, we're going to go out and stay in the state and get Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver from LSU, height, weight, speed, and very similar to the Giants going Roma Dunze. This is the Saints going, all right, you got Chris Olave. You know, you know Shahid's a good role player. You know, the offensive line, we get hopefully Ryan checks back, so the offensive line is pretty solid. You got Alvin Kamara, you got a decent run game. How much he's got to continue to throw as many assets as we possibly can to, to just find ways to win and make life easy on Derek Carr. Probably not, though. I think they are definitely in quarterback purgatory. But, hey, Brian, at worst, Brian Thomas is going to be a great wide receiver to go with Chris Olave for the eventual franchise quarterback if you get him this year or next year or whatever. Pick 15, we have the Indianapolis Colts, and I'm going to have them get on Arnold, corner from Alabama. Didn't, you know, not the Raz freak that we saw with Quinion Mitchell, Nate Wiggins. You know, Kool-Aid McKinstry helped himself out his pro day. I think he solidified himself as a first rounder. But Arnold still has the best tape. I think he's the highest floor, potentially, out of all the corners in this year's draft class. And you look at Indianapolis, I think they're retooling the secondary there just a little bit. Thought about wide receiver. I've gone wide receiver. I've gone Brock Bowers has been a popular pick here. But kind of look at the wide receivers that are available and looking at what they have. You know, you re-signed Michael Pittman. You got Josh Downs in the slot. So it's like, you know, Alec Pierce could probably move back to wide receiver for you. Get someone else that can play on the outside. So would that be Adonai Mitchell? You know, and it almost comes down to the value of, like, there's great corners here. Legit, talented corners, which is a need for the Colts. Or do you want to just say, like, all right, give me the fourth best wide receiver. You know, get the fourth swing of wide receiver. So I feel like that could come into play a little bit. Get the top corner versus getting, like, the fourth option at wide receiver. Clearly not your top pick. I feel like that would be the move there for the Colts. Love to hear you guys think about that one. Colts fans, Seattle at pick 16. And we're going to have them. I look at the Seahawks. Look at the guys are in the first round. What is the biggest need for them? I think it's interior. I think the interior of that offensive line, we're going to have to go with Jackson Powers Johnson. Now, he's a guy that on tape, this seems like, you know, it's in the range. There are some slight concerns, it sounds like, with the medicals a little bit that could cause him to fall. But assuming all those check out, I think getting a big dog there at center for Seattle just keeps that offensive line running. If they've prioritized, they've got some hits. You know, Charles Cross looks legit. Uh, the dude, the other guy, the right tackle of Washington State looks legit. Someone like JPJ, a lot of people think, you know, has a little Jason Kelsey to his game, and he's like 30 pounds heavier. I think that'd be a good potential need there for Seattle. But also, I mean, I get it. If you don't love this pick, pick 16 for an interior lineman, maybe a little rich. But like, I look to Seattle like Edge. It said Edge was a big need. Like Mafe, like are, are you going to move off of Cheno Wosu? And then if you do so, you know, it really Latu, I guess, would be where you could potentially pivot there a little bit. I don't think Chop Robinson goes, you know, top 20 in that range. So, I mean, I, that's where I would go if I didn't go into your line. But I think uh, day one started there, and JPJ uh, is a really good fit for Seattle. Pick 17, we have Jacksonville, who in my last mock, I actually had them go Powers Johnson, but they addressed center. Uh, they brought in Mitch Morse. So I'm going to have them get Byron Murphy. I am think he's going to play on that front three. I looked at Roy Robertson-Harris at the end. I think you can put him up there on that front. Tested very well in the combine, coming off a breakout year at Texas, and just gives the Jags a little bit more bite on that defensive line. We have the Cincinnati Bengals at pick 18, and I am going under the assumption that there's going to be a T. Higgins trade, and they move off T. Higgins. I'm going to have them get Adonai Mitchell. Insane Raz, like 997, 6'4", freak athlete, similar body profile to T. Higgins, different type of player, but just the speed between him and Jamar Chase is going to be ridiculous. It can't be contained. I don't know what kind of value. I mean, honestly, if they do trade T. Higgins, they're probably going to have a second-round pick that I don't have in this mock draft to go elsewhere, could do, you know, maybe go on the offensive line, defensive line, tight end, somewhere in that range. But I think assuming T. Higgins is gone, they got to replace that as soon as possible. And when you see a freak athlete like Mitchell, that is a pretty goddamn good reason to invest that 18th pick there. At wide receiver, 19, we have the Rams. And I'm going to have the Rams get a lot to edge rush from UCLA, kind of knock against him. 
was like the tape was the best, the technique was the best, how good athletically was he, and then he ended up putting like a 9-2 rounds or something like that. So ticked off all those boxes. Rams are going to need to immediately address their pass rush with the surprise retiring of Aaron Donald. And while they're different positions, I think you can get some production, especially immediate production right away from Latu, which honestly at pick 19 is pretty good value. Pick 20 with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I'm having them go get a left tackle in Talis Fuaga. Offensive tackle from Oregon State, tested pretty well. I have some slight concerns about the arm length, but I think he's going to likely stay at offensive tackle and give Pittsburgh two very good tackles for the future. Uh, the dude that got out of Georgia last year. Yeah, Fuaga now, I think he'll probably, you know, either way you can flick some, you know, put Broderick Jones at left tackle, Fuaga at right tackle. Either way, I think prioritizing the offensive line there for Russ Wilson, Justin Fields, whoever it is, would be the direction that I go there. 21, we have the Miami Dolphins. And I don't have them going a little bit of run the offensive line. We do Maris Mims. I feel like that just kind of screams Dolphin pick here. You get just a freak athlete on the offensive line. Now, the knock against Mims hasn't played a lot of football at Georgia. But it goes without saying that if you're getting projected to go top 20, which is he's pretty consistent. He's played that little football. It really just reflects how freakishly high your ceiling is. I think building the trends. Even though Miami lost a lot on the defensive side of the ball, I think the value for them right now at 21 is potentially going at the offensive line. Philadelphia at pick 22. Got our options at corner, which, you know, you could be happy for the Philadelphia Eagles. I honestly have no idea how the Eagles view their corner room. I, I know Bradbury is, I almost feel, I don't know. I have this weird, sick feeling that they think Bradbury could turn around under Fangio. But they committed money to it. But outside of that, I mean, we got some prospects. Keely Ringo, Eli Ricks. Those are guys that, you know, I think the Eagles are pretty high on. But you clearly still need that succession plan in place for Darius Slay. And I think if this is the board... Quinion Mitchell falling a little bit. Nate Wiggins. I, I think, honestly, there's just as much of a chance at 22 that Mitchell, Higgins, Nich, Mitchell, Wiggins, and Cooper DeGene are all gone come 22. I think Cooper DeGene is the best fit, but given the shot, Quinion Mitchell ticks off more boxes, I think, to be a successor to Darius Slay. I think Cooper DeGene might be able to find his way on the field sooner than Quinion Mitchell. Well, I think Quinion Mitchell is the true successor, given the opportunity, if he's still there at 22, which would be a little bit of a fall for him. I think he's going probably in that 12 to, I think, Philly. I think 12 would be maybe where he go as early to the Raiders. I think 22 to Philly is absolutely his ceiling in this spot type of spot. Maybe some of these teams are going to kind of hold the level of competition, given the fact that Nate Wiggs out of Clemson looks really damn good. Tough for competition. Maybe put that ahead of a guy that came from Toledo. But I think Quinion Mitchell to Philly. I actually think my very first mock draft I had for the Eagles I had Quinion Mitchell, and if hopefully somehow, some way, he's available there at 22. I would love that pick for Philly. 23, we have the Patriots. Oh, don't hate me on this one. I'm going Bo Nix, quarterback from Oregon. And now, I'm going to say right now, I don't have any other quarterbacks going in this range. And in my head, in a perfect world, you know, and if you're going from like, there's no way. We go Bo Nix, we trade out of whatever to go. I think you could get Bo Nix at 34. Patriots pick second in the second round. In terms of value, I think if people say you got Bo Nix second round, hey, that's pretty good. I'm making the argument, I think Bo Nix at 34, that's like the, the range I would personally feel comfortable with him. But the reason why I have him going here in the first round is because, and I'll say right now, on my little thing, I had Bo Nix at 34, and I scratched him out to put him at 23 so you get the fifth-year option. Get the extra-year option for your rookie quarterback. If Bo Nix hits, which he potentially could, you're going to want that fifth-year option. I think that that is more valuable than, say, getting better value of Bo Nix in the second round, which I think, you know, you can all agree, especially with some of the players that are on the board right now. Like, Bo Nix over some of these guys? But that fifth-year option is very, very valuable, more so than any other position at that quarterback spot. So the Patriots getting him at 23. Do I think Bo Nix is a first-round talent? I, I, I like him more in the second round, but that fifth-year option puts him right there at 23. Dallas at 24. I think getting J.C. Latham at tackle, I think the play here would be put him at left tackle, would be the sexer for Tyron Smith, and you put Tyler Smith back to the guard spot, even though I think you know, the assumption is that Tyler Smith can kick out and be the Tyron Smith replacement, but I think you just you get two spots better on the offensive line, keeping Tyler Smith at guard, where he's been very good, and then you get Latham, who's a pro-ready day one starter at tackle. Green Bay at pick 25. I'm going to stay on the offensive tackles, and I'm going to, have to get Tyler Guyton. I think left tackle is the biggest need now with Bakhtiari's release, and Tyler Guyton's really kind of the last of like the guys I think you can feel pretty comfortable plug and playing at the tackle spot. Now, Guyton might not be as pro-ready as other players, but he has ridiculous size, 
Tested out very well. Athletic profile ticks off. And Green Bay has been trusting a lot of their young players on the offensive side of the ball to contribute sooner than later. I think the same can be said for Guyton if he goes at 25. 26, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we're going to get Nate Wiggins. They just traded away uh, Carlton Davis to the Detroit Lions. There is a now a spot there at corner for a starter. You get Nate Wiggins, who is a height, speed guy. Weight is kind of a concern, 185 pounds. But how many times? like that? At this point, honestly... Yes, you're going to give up a little bit probably in run defense. But how many times, I and mean, I just go back, I can relate a lot of things to the Eagles. Like, that was a big knock against Devontae Smith. Always way too smart. Like, not an issue. An absolute non-issue. The only issue, honestly, we've seen from, like, light players are, like, the running backs. Keaton Mitchell, um, oh, dude from the Dolphins running back last year. Like, yeah, that's a position where you're getting smashed every single play. That, yeah, maybe you knock some points off for a smaller frame. But these other skill position spots... I don't think it's that big of an issue. I think Nate Wiggins to Tampa Bay would be great in Todd Bowles' scheme. 27, we have the Arizona Cardinals. And I'm going to get Johnny Newton, D lineman from Illinois. This has been a popular pick for me. I think the front three there for Arizona needs a little TLC. Newton getting slept on a little bit because he didn't test, had an injury. But you look at the production at Illinois, he's as good as any D lineman in this year's draft class. Buffalo at 28. I have the Bills. I didn't love the board for them here. I have them trading back. Now, I don't know exactly what the compensation would be, but I have the Carolina Panthers being aggressive. So I think I had Carolina trading their pick 33, and I'm just going to say, like, if this is the trade, I'd be like, you know, I'd give you a two or three. You know, that's kind of be the range, I think, because obviously you don't have a whole lot of picks. But I think Carolina is like, they're, they're done getting dog walked. They're done the disrespect. Everyone's clowning on them, lack of value. They go up and they get Chop Robinson, pass rusher out of Penn State. Freak athlete. They're going to hope and gamble that you can get somehow, someway, something that looks similar to a Micah Parsons and you immediately move on from Brian Burns by getting successor there in the first round. Because if they stay at pick 33, I don't think they're going to be able to get that pass rusher. And you still get something like the Buffalo Bills. I think the top need for the Bills after moving on from Gabe Davis is wide receiver. I think you're, you know, there's not a gigantic drop-off there from 28 to 33 for a wide receiver for Buffalo, and you get additional picks on the back end there. Detroit at pick 29. I'm going to have them go with a guy that helped out his draft stock at his pro day, and that is Kool-Aid McKinstry out of Alabama. Had everything that looked good. It was just kind of like, does he have the speed? Does he have first-round corner-type athleticism? And I think he ticked off those boxes at his pro day, and it is the pro day. It is what it is. It's not the same as a combine. But I, I like his tape a lot. I think he doesn't get enough credit for it. You know, he does a lot of the dirty work, which I think will fit in well there with a Dan Campbell-type defense. And corner is a big need for the Detroit Lions. Even after the addition of Carlton Davis, I still think they should invest in that position. Baltimore at pick 30. I was thinking wide receiver. But the offensive line there in Baltimore has got rattled. So you're going to go with a day one starter in Graham Barton that brings a lot of versatility. He's literally played everywhere on the offensive line. I, you know, wherever, wherever he lands. I think you could guard, you can go tackle. Either one of those two spots, I think he will start as a rookie for the Baltimore Ravens. 31, we have the San Francisco 49ers. I'm going to go Cooper DeGene. You know who's going to like Cooper DeGene? You know? John Lynch is going to like Cooper DeGene, okay? I don't know what about it, but I think John Lynch is going to like Cooper DeGene. DB is a need for the 49ers. I think the versatility there, as much as it pays me to say that he's not going to be a corner, he's probably going to be a corner. I think so. I think he can be a corner. But there is still, you know, the fact that corner, slot, safety, he's, he's a DB. He is a DB at the end of the day. I think that versatility would be very interesting for the 49ers to get on the back end. And finishing up with Kansas City at 32. It's kind of just been the popular pick here, Xavier Worthy. It's just a fun thing. I don't know if they're actually going to do it or not. But putting that type of speed, that MVS replacement, it's an upgrade. That MVS upgrade for that offense to capitalize on the Cato Bernard that Patrick and Mahomes has. And just the, the ways that they'd be able to use them. Would be pretty terrifying. So I think this pick here kind of reminds me of when they went Clyde edwards Hilaire, which didn't work out, but there was just a certain, like, the Chiefs are like, we're in a dynasty, fuck it. Let's let's make this move and see if it works out. I think they may take another swing at a player like that, whereas in reality, probably tackle at 32 might be the easier pick, especially Morgan, Suabadia, Patrick Paul. I think those guys there could be in that range to go last pick in the first round, but worthy. That's a fun one. I think that's that would be a pick that most Chiefs fans would be very happy with. 33 via Buffalo. So this is from that trade. I don't think this is, you know, he's not my next wide receiver up in terms of my rankings, but in terms of what Buffalo is looking for, I have them going Keon Coleman, 
Wide receiver from Florida State. Now, you could go with more athletic freaks. Legette, Devontae Walker. Like These are guys that are putting up big-time RAS scores. Keon Coleman didn't test the best in terms of straight line speed, but everything else, I think, gives them that Gabe Davis-style wide receiver, which I think they want. They still want that type of playmaker. It just didn't work with Gabe Davis. They didn't want to pay him. They didn't have enough consistency. But in terms of, I mean, similar body type, similar play style, uh, and I think Coleman is a better athlete than he's getting credit for coming out of the combine. We have the Patriots at 34. This is just a Patriot pick. And we're going to get Ladd McConkey, wide receiver from Georgia. Bill Belichick's not there, but uh, Ladd McConkey is just... I mean, it was one of those things that was surprising that, like, the closest comp for him was, like, Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State, which, obviously, it's a lazy comp just assuming McConkey's a, you know, typical white slot guy. But, I mean, he is just he just gets open. He's, he's route running. is S-tier for this year's draft class. And I think he, at 34, a great pick. Patriots just need the best playmaker available I think that is McConkey at 34. 35, we have Arizona, and I'm about to go get Ennis Rakestraw Jr., the corner from Mizzou. That secondary needs a little TLC at the corner spot for Arizona. Uh, I think Rakestraw gives him the best shot at a guy that can play on the outside. Washington at 36, we're going to go address the offensive tackle spot and get them Jordan Morgan, see if he can come in and compete at left tackle, which I think in the last rebuild I just did. I think I went Jordan Morgan as well. Uh, and I want Jaden Daniels Jordan Morgan instead of Drake May Jordan Morgan, but... I like that move. Obviously, I did in a freaking rebuild. Chargers at 37. I'm going to go Darius Robinson, edge rusher from Mizzou. I think he's going to play in that front three and help out the pass rush. Obviously, he has a new DC. Got to find new ways to get creative to try and uh, get out to the quarterback. They restructured both Bosa and Mack to keep those guys intact. I think you put a monster like Robinson on that front. It's going to make their life even easier. Tennessee. Okay. What are we talking about here? Tennessee. I think when you look at the Titans here, this is where they're in that spot where... <sighs> are they in a rebuild or not? Because they're not... This is a pick that, like, I didn't love making this pick. But I had them go back-to-back -back tackle. Just both sides. I don't think, like, you got Redunds, Petit Friere. Like, they've been... They've tried. It hasn't worked. They're trying to fix it. So you go get Joe Alt. Left tackle. Suamadia, right tackle. Got your bookends. Long term, four or five years of tackle play to protect Will Levis and the offense that they want. It's a weird spot, man. Tennessee was a tough team to mock for. And at the end of the day, I was like, the value is there to double up on offensive tackles, a position that they've been struggling with. I, you get some versus. I mean, Suamadia could kick into guard. He's just a big athlete right now at this point. But value is there. I, I don't love going double tackle. Because it is a lot at one position, but it's been a gigantic position to need for Tennessee. And, you know, they want to clearly want to run the football again. Tajay Spears, Tony Pollard. I, I think you can do a lot worse than just all out reinvesting on the offensive line. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Carolina at pick 39. I had them going with Braden Fisk, D lineman from Florida State. You put him on that front. I think you put him on the other side, Derek Brown. And things will look pretty nice for Carolina terms of Fisk and you got Chop Robinson to try to replace the pass rush that you lost by losing Gross Matos and obviously Brian Burns in that trade. Commanders at pick 40. We're going to go out and get them a weapon here in Xavier Legette. I think they just went with the best athlete available. 6'3", 230. They just don't have that style of playmaker right now. And you have Legette on the outside with Scary Terry. You have Jahan Dotson in the slot. That is a lot of weapons for Drake May to succeed sooner than later 41 we have the green bay packers on the board i'm gonna have them go this is tough man newbin tanked it. he had a terrible like newbin and kitchens posted very bad athletic testing very bad like not the it's it's going to knock them i think Jaden hicks is pro, in the conversation to be the first safety off the board tested very well outstanding size great production at washington state safety is a gigantic need there for the green bay packers i think he could be a starter for them uh, with Xavier McKinney, and you're, you're not going to even think twice about it. Uh, but it's, I think, 41. And I, trust me, I, I remember I posted the Raz and Newbin, and every one of the mentions was Packer fans. Packers are clearly looking for a safety upgrade early in this year's draft. And I, I think Hicks, you know, I mean, maybe you could go Newbin. Maybe you can look at the tape and, and kind of throw away the fact that he's like a two Raz athlete. But I think Hicks is like a nine Raz, six two, six three. I think he's a better fit right now, especially from an athletic profile and how the Packers like to draft. Houston at 42. This is a tough one, but he put up an S-tier Raz, and I think D-line is a need. They're going to go Rook or Hororo. D-lineman from Clemson. 
Uh, in one of the best rads I've seen for a defensive tackle. Slightly undersized, but look at some of the D tackles already on that roster. They're not always looking for guys. Like, they'll get a 295-er. And not even think twice about it there. D'Amico Ryans can use those guys. He doesn't body shame against a slightly undersized D lineman. And you get yourself a S-tier type athlete on the inside there to just continue to revamp that defensive front. We have at 43, the Atlanta Falcons going and grabbing Kamari Lassiter. Corner from Georgia. Got some conflicting numbers from his pro day, but it seems like he tested pretty well. Tape is on the point there, and I think corner is a spot you want to add some competition. I love to see... Uh, the dude they got out of Utah continued to develop a little bit. I liked him a lot, even though he's a little bit undersized, not a great athlete. Similar profile to Lassiter. So if they like those types of corners, maybe they get two swings at getting that type of player to see if they can pan out. 44, we have Vegas, and they're going Michael Penix Jr., quarterback from Washington. I just, I don't know. I, I think Vegas, you know, you got Gardner Minshew. He's going to win you some games, but it just comes down to the fact, man, very similar to how I view Justin Jefferson and the Vikings need to go get a quarterback. I, you know, you got to get someone for Devontae Adams. You don't make that move for Devontae Adams and just waste whatever's left of his prime with not great quarterback play. And I don't know. I feel like Phoenix gives you a shot. You got Minshew. They can battle it out. It's I, I don't know. The, the Raiders are just a fucking weird spot, man. A really weird spot. And I, I think taking a swing at a quarterback in the second round is not the worst thing they can do. At least it gives you an option in case Gardner Minshew doesn't work out. Because Gardner Minshew, you got to think, you look at Gardner Minshew with the Colts last year, you're like, hey, that's that's not bad. But I think a big thing is the Colts scheme and Shane Steichen. And the Vegas Raiders don't have Shane Steichen. They have a defensive head coach. So I I don't know. I, I don't know if Minshew, you're getting the same Minshew the Colts had. I think I would take a swing at a QB here. New Orleans at 45. We're going to go get Michael Hall Jr. Another guy, another big 9.2 Raz. Getting a lot of hype right now. No senior bowl is hyping him up. Uh, as an interior pass rusher, you play him. You got Breezy on the inside, kind of refreshing the inside of that defensive line there for the New Orleans Saints going forward. We have the Indianapolis Colts at 46. And we're going with a gate here. Ricky Pearsall. Why my ah, this sucks. I'll tell you right now. If he was still there, I'd grab with one of my Eagles picks. But baller, man. One of you know, sleeper. He's a top, he's my number five wide receiver in this year's draft class. Even though he didn't go fifth, because I think there's different needs and styles. You know, I'd love to see Anthony Richardson pound. They didn't play with each other a whole lot, just one year. I'd love to see Anthony Richardson flex his sway there as a franchise quarterback and saying Pearsall is better than uh, Alec Pierce or whatever the hell. And we, you know, he's going to be a dog for us. I'd love to see that fit there for the Indianapolis Colts. Giants up at forty-seven. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. When I look back at this, the two picks that I was like, I, one was the tackle Suamadi out of Tennessee, and one was this one in the second round. In terms of like questionable picks. I want Trey Benson. I think Trey Benson passed with flying... I think he's, he's definitely in the conversation for the top running back. It's, it's really between him and Brooks, but Brooks is coming off that bad injury and hasn't been able to test. Benson had outstanding tape of Florida State, has that elite second gear, posted like a 9-6 Raz, as good of an athlete as any at that running back spot. And like you just... You can't... The optics of going from Saquon Barkley to Devin Singletary. I mean, Singletary made some plays last year for the Houston Texans, but he's like a he's a committee guy. It's not going to be your bell, Cal. You get someone like Benson that's a healthy one-two punch. you got to have a run game in New York. you got to be able to take some of that pressure off Daniel Jones. You don't, can't win games with Daniel Jones throwing the football 30-plus times. So I think you get Benson and Singletary. Gives you a nice little one-two punch combo in that backfield. Jacksonville at 48. We go slot corner. Mike Sandra still. Really like him. Man, didn't he tested fine. Converted wide receiver to slot corner. I do think he is arguably the top slot in this year's draft class. I like him a lot. I like, even though he's way down here, Jerry and Jones at a Florida State put like a 9-7 Raz, big time number. He's another good slot, but I think Sainsville is an absolute dog. We'll get after it. I think Jacksonville, after, you know, you know they got rid of uh, the, their slot, right? The guy that they got from the Rams. Don't know why I'm blank. Darius Williams. So you get something like Sainsville that can come in and contribute on the defense in that slot role. We have Cincinnati at pick 49, and I'm going to have them go on the offensive line here and get Cooper Beebe. From K-State, great value here. I think you plug and play him at guard. Protect it. You know, again, it's just another, yes, they go and got some tackles. Right, they got, uh, you got Orlando Brown. You got Trent Brown. Still got to keep protecting Joe Burrow there a little bit on the interior. And I think Cooper Beebe, day one starter. Another guy that I think I probably would have picked if he was here for the Philadelphia Eagles in the 50s. But we're not. We're here at uh, pick 50 for Philly. Got a lot of options. 
I've been very partial to going Peyton Wilson. I'm coming around to the fact that they're close. I, I, I like the tape of Peyton Wilson more, but Cooper has the athleticism and doesn't have the medical concerns. So we are going to go Edger and Cooper at pick 50 for the Philadelphia Eagles. It is a faux pas pick. The, both these picks arguably are. Corner, then linebacker. Does Howie Roseman do that? Probably not, but we never thought Howie Roseman was going to pay a running back and we paid Saquon Barkley big time money. So Edger and Cooper, finally for the Philadelphia Eagles there, likely should be a day one starter at linebacker uh, alongside N'Kobe Dean. Then you're going to have Devin White kind of rotate in, likely and ideally as a blitzer. Pick 51. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm going to have them go get Roman Wilson, wide receiver from Michigan. I, I think we're def kind of getting to that log jam of, you know, what style of wide receiver you need. And I think to get a compliment to George Pickens, I think Roman Wilson gives you a little bit different, get a little bit more of a compliment, a little bit more similar to a Deontay Johnson, which they traded away. That's kind of the direct, but I mean, a lot of wide receiver options here for Pittsburgh that I think they would be happy with. We have the Rams at pick 52, and I'm going to have them go on the offensive line and get Patrick Paul, tackle from Houston. I think you add the look, some competition at that left tackle spot. Alaric Jackson, love him, Canadian, cool. Do you want him to just outright win that job at left tackle? Probably not. I think someone like Patrick Paul, especially getting that value at 52, could compete, and I wouldn't be surprised if they made a pick like that if he could open up day one, week one, as their starting tackle. We now have Philadelphia at 53. And this is kind of just going by team needs. I think Philly, you could go tackle. Don't love the tackles here. You could go guard. Don't love the guards here. But, I mean, Frazier's good, but he's a center. So then the next gift for the Eagles, you got safeties. Don't love the safeties here. Like if I had to get one, maybe maybe Cole Bishop. I know Philly's had him in for other, like they've officially met with him. Edge rusher, maybe. D-line. Eh, my pick for Philadelphia, I would go slot wide receiver. And the best slot wide receiver available is Malachi Corley out of Western Kentucky. I feel like you look at it right now, you clearly have two outside guys in A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. You're going to pay Devontae Smith sooner and later. So now you're going to have two very expensive wide receivers. You can't ignore the rest of the spots. You get a cost-controlled rookie that's going to be able to contribute for four years. Corley, not only is a dog, he's a dog, he is a he is a perfect Nick Sirianni wide receiver, but he's a perfect slot wide receiver. Think of Debo Samuel. He could be a Debo Samuel for our offense. Let us see some test numbers, though. I would love to. He's jacked. He's strong. He made Bruce Feldman's freak list, so he should test as a good athlete. But there hasn't been really anything this offseason, this draft process, that's been able to put pen to paper for his actual testing numbers. Now we're on to pick 54, Cleveland. We're going to address the linebacker spot. We're going to get them Peyton Wilson, 6'4", freak athlete. As long as the medical is clear, you're going to be good. I think I'm looking at it. They did bring in Jordan Hicks as like a short-term option. But I think long-term, Peyton Wilson and JOK, especially maybe in a little bit cover, they don't want to pay JOK. His contract's going to be coming up next year. Gives you a little bit of flexibility in the middle of that defense. And I think someone like, uh, you know, Jim Schwartz would value Peyton Wilson at that spot. Where a lot of people, you know, they just, let's be honest, they're kind of devaluing the linebacker. Number 55, Miami Dolphins, get a nose tackle here in Tavondre Sweat, who is, I don't know, if there's a nose tackle that's better than him. It's just nose tackles don't go particularly high unless you're a freak athlete like Jordan Davis or the dude Dallas got last year at a Mason Mozzie Smith. But I think Tavondre Sweat right there, plug and play day one starter at 55 for that Dolphins defense that has lost a lot of players. Dallas at 56, rather than go get the center here, Zach Frazier. They lost their old center in... Uh, Biotish went on. Where did he go? Washington, I think. Need a new day one starter. This guy here, Zach Frazier. I've, you know, this is just kind of like looking around. Like he's high up there in Daniel Jeremiah, high up there on Dane Brugler, one of the top centers, versatile. Seems pro ready. Maybe not the highest ceiling, but a pretty high floor. And Dallas needs to get guys that can start sooner than later on that offense. Wouldn't be surprised if went Frazier be day one starter at center. Tampa Bay. We're going to go address the pass rush here. We're going to get Chris Braswell, the edge rusher from Alabama. T tested slightly worse than I expected. I thought he was going to be a little bit more of a Raz King. But athletics, athleticism is still totally there. And I think you want to add some competition, some rotation depth with Yaya Diaby and Troyan Shoyinka. Green Bay at pick 58. We're going to have them go get a height weight outside corner here in TJ Tampa. 6'2". Bring some length. Just You can't get enough consistency in terms of staying time, you know, availability, if you will, for Eric Stokes on the other side of Jair Alexander. Plus, my surprise is, I don't know, man. Just knowing Green Bay, I feel like... Someone like Jair Alexander, if someone just got shockingly traded, that was a superstar, 
I feel like Green Bay's getting fed up with him a little bit. I, I could see something like that. Like a little bit like an Aaron Rodgers. He should never go, but they're going to get, you know, I don't know. I don't want to speak that out there into existence because that would be terrible for Green Bay. But I do think they might start thinking like, ah, let's kind of reinforce the secondary here a little bit. We got our safety. Let's go grab a corner. 59, we have Houston back on the clock, and I think they should go out and get a linebacker in Junior Colson. Another guy that's you know, arguably a value, especially look, Daniel Jeremiah has a top 40 player. We have him going here at 59. I think the inside of that defense, they, locked, they lost uh, Cashman, who had a breakout year. I think someone like Colson would be a linebacker that D'Amico Rides go, yep, that's a guy. That is a guy that I'm going to develop into a long-term fixture of this defense. An absolute dog in the heart and soul of that Michigan linebacking core. 60 with the Buffalo Bills, and I'm going to have them go get Mason Smith, D-tackle from LSU. Got some veterans there, D-tackle, but long-term, pair next to Ed Oliver. Murky, you might got, like, got you know guys that can cover for one year, some veterans. But I think long-term, Mason Smith gives them some youth and development in the interior of that defensive line. Detroit at 61. We're going to go Marshawn Nealon, another Michigan boy here. Tested very well, 9-3 on the Raz. Another guy that I don't know a whole lot about, but the scouting community seems to be very high on him. I'm looking at the Detroit Lions. You got Davenport on a one-year rental. Get someone that also can rotate in and be more of a long-term developmental option. And Nealon brings a great athletic background and really big-time numbers at Western Michigan. Baltimore at 62. They're going to go get Troy Franklin. Maybe a little bit of a fall, but still technically it is the second round. These wide receivers can go. Troy Franklin... Uh, didn't test as good as I thought he was going to be, but still an athlete on the outside, 9-plus Raz, and gives Baltimore a, another deep threat as they still kind of mull over the decision if they're going to pick up the option on Rashad Bateman or not. San Francisco at 63. Now I'm also projecting very similar to, to the uh, Bengals pick, where I'm like, they're going to trade D. Higgins, right? Seems like the Niners, man. There's rumors that they're going to move on from Brandon Ayuk. If that is the case, we're going to go get Devontez Walker. Speed. Like, I don't even know what his rent. 9-7, height, weight, speed, takes the top off of defense. If you lose Ayuk, you're going to need to replace some speed there at the wide receiver room. And that is another guy that's arguably really good value at 63, falling in the 49ers lap. But I'm only really making that pick under the assumption that there's going to be some movement in their wide receiver room. Finish up the box draft at pick 64 for the Kansas City Chiefs. Going with a little bit of a surprise pick. I think they need to go tackle. And next up for me, after testing well, I thought he was underrated through this whole process. Roger Rosengarten, the tackle from Washington. You look at that left tackle spot, big time question mark for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think you get a big time athlete like Roger Garden. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Trey Smith when he was coming out of tennis, uh, Tennessee in terms of physicality, in terms of that dog that they clearly like the value on that offensive line. I think doubling up on the offense after their defense. I mean, they did lose Sneed, right? They just traded him away. But you look at the corners that were still available. The value wasn't great. If you really wanted to go corner, you might have had to go at that 30-second pick. And you could look at Rakestraw. You could look at Lassiter out of Georgia. But going with the fun pick, you got to go with the less sexy pick and try to keep and protect Patrick Mahomes with a big-time athlete who's like, yeah, 9-7 Raz, one of the best athletes at the tackle spot in this year's draft. So there you go, guys. That is... A two-round mock draft here, post-free agency. Let me know what you guys think. Do I do a good service for your favorite team? Do you hate the picks I made for your favorite? Is there anybody here that I didn't have even going in the first two rounds? You think that is stupid. That guy is going in the first round. You need to have him go in the first two. That is everything in between. Let me know in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Till next time, it's your boy C4. Say peace out, love you. Have a good one.